Hey guys, we're going to start on chapter 18, Hematology. So if you will turn to your books on page 662, the introduction to hematology. You're going to go ahead and highlight the very first sentence where it says, Hematology is the study of blood, including the morphologic appearance and function of blood cells and diseases of the blood and blood-forming tissues. Laboratory analysis and hematology is concerned with the examination of blood for the purpose of detecting pathologic conditions. It includes performing blood cell counts, evaluating the clotting ability of the blood, and identifying cell types. These tests are valuable tools that allow the provider to determine whether each blood component falls within its reference range. Highlight the next uh, sentence where it says examples of hematologic tests include hemoglobin, hematocrit, white blood cell count, red blood cell count, differential white blood cell count, prothrombin time, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, and platelet count. We're going to go on down a couple of paragraphs, and I want you to highlight where it says the most frequently performed hema hematologic laboratory test is the complete blood cell count, also known as a CBC. A CBC is routinely performed on new patients and on patients with a pathologic condition. The test results provide valuable information to assist the provider in making the diagnosis, evaluating the patient's progress, and regulating treatment. The tests included in a CBC are as follows. Please highlight the white blood cell count, red blood cell count, platelet count, hemoglobin, hematocrit, differential white blood cell count, and red blood cell indices. For the components and functions of blood, I want you to highlight that the blood consists of two parts, liquid and solid. Plasma, the liquid portion of the blood, consists of a clear yellowish fluid that makes up approximately 55% of the blood volume. The plasma transports nutrients to the tissues of the body to nourish and sustain them and it picks up waste from the tissues. These wastes are eliminated through the kidneys. You're gonna highlight that the plasma also transports antibodies, enzymes, and hormones to help regulate normal body functioning. The solid portion of the blood consists of three types of cells, erythrocytes, leukocytes, and thrombocytes. That needs to be highlighted. The solid portion of blood accounts for 45% of the total blood volume. Please highlight that the average adult body contains 10 to 12 pints of blood. Now we're going to look into erythrocytes. I need you to highlight that in an adult, erythrocytes or red blood cells are formed in the red bone marrow of the ribs, sternum, skull, and pelvic bone, and in the ends of the long bones of the limbs. The immature form of an erythrocyte contains a nucleus. I need you to highlight that as the cell develops and matures, however, it loses its nucleus and acquires the shape of a biconcave disc, thicker at the rim than at the center. This shape provides the erythrocyte with a greater surface area for the exchange of substances. An erythrocyte is approximately 7 to 8 millimeter in diameter. Highlight that the average number of erythrocyte ranges from 4 to 5.5 million per cubic millimeter of blood in a woman and from 4.5 to 6.2 million per cubic millimeter of blood in a man. A major portion of the erythrocyte consists of hemoglobin. Please highlight the following. Hemoglobin, a complex compound that transports oxygen and is responsible for the red color of the erythrocyte. The amount of hemoglobin in the blood averages 12 to 16 for a woman and 14 to 18 for a man. A hemoglobin molecule consists of a globulin or protein and an iron containing pigment called hemin. One hemoglobin molecule loosely combines with four oxygen molecules in the lungs to form a substance called oxyhemoglobin. Oxyhemoglobin is transported and distributed to the tissues where the oxygen easily released from the hemoglobin. The blood picks up carbon dioxide, a waste product, and transport it back to the lungs to be expelled. When oxygen combines with hemoglobin, a bright red color results that this 
that is characteristics of arterial blood. Venous blood is darker red owing to its lower oxygen content. Please highlight that the average lifespan of a red blood cell is 120 days. Toward the end of time, it becomes more and more fragile and eventually ruptures and breaks down. This process is known as hemolysis. Hemoglobin liberated from the red blood cell also breaks down. The iron is stored and later is reused to form new hemoglobin and the body metabolizes the protein. Bilirubin is formed by metabolism of the heme units and is transported to the liver, where it is eventually excreted as a waste product in the bile. I want you to please become familiar with Table 18.1 on page 663 and 664. For the leukocytes, I need you to highlight that leukocytes or white blood cells are clear colorless cells that contain a nucleus. The number of leukocytes in a healthy adult ranges from 4,500 to 11,000 per cubic millimeter of blood. Leukocytosis is a condition of having an abnormal increase in the number of leukocytes greater than 11,000 per cubic millimeter. And leukopenia is a condition of having an abnormal decrease in the number of leukocytes less than 4,500 per cubic millimeter. Please highlight also that the function of leukocytes is to defend the body against infection. Pathogens can gain entrance to the body in a variety of ways. Review the infection process cycle in Chapter 2. Leukocytes attempt to destroy invading pathogens and remove them from the body. In contrast to erythrocytes, please highlight that leukocytes do their work in the tissues. They are transported to the site of infection by circulatory system. If we're on page 665, you also need to review figure 18.1. I want you to also highlight under figure 18.1 this movement of the leukocytes through the pores or the capillaries and out into the tissue is known as diapedesis. Leukocytes, especially the granular forms, are phagocytic and when they arrive at the site of an infection, they begin the process of phagocytosis, the engulfing and destruction of pathogens and damaged cells. In some conditions, pus forms in the infected area, supration. Pus contains dead leukocytes, dead bacteria, and dead tissue cells. That needs to be highlighted. If we're on page 666 on thrombocytes, you need to highlight that platelets, also known as thrombocytes, are small, clear, and disc-shaped. They lack a nucleus and are formed in the red bone marrow from giant cells known as megachirocytes. Platelets function by participating in the blood clotting mechanism. Please highlight that the number of platelets in a healthy adult ranges from 150,000 to 400,000 per cubic millimeter of blood. For hemoglobin determination, in the second paragraph, I need you to highlight where it says the reference range for an adult female is 12 to 16, and the reference range for the adult male is 14 to 18. If we go on to the very next paragraph, I need you to highlight that a decreased hemoglobin level occurs with anemia, especially iron deficiency anemia, hypothyroidism, cirrhosis of the liver, severe hemorrhaging, hemolytic reactions, and certain systemic diseases, such as leukemia and Hodgkin's disease. Increased levels of hemoglobin are present with polycythemia, chronic obstruction pulmonary disease, and congestive heart failure. If we're going to go on over to hem hematocrit on page 667, the hematocrit HCT is a simple, reliable, and informative test that is frequently performed in the medical office. Please highlight that the word hematocrit means to separate blood. I need you to also go down a couple of sentences and highlight that between the plasma and the packed red blood cells is a small, thin, yellowish gray layer known as the Buffy coat, which contains the platelets and white blood cells. The purpose of the hematocrit is to measure the percentage volume of packed red blood cells in whole blood. The hematocrit reference range for a woman is 37 to 47%, and the reference range for a man 
is 40% to 54%. Please highlight those two sentences. If we're gonna go on over to the other side on page 667, right above on the case study number one, what would you do? Please highlight where it says the capillary tube is then placed in the microhematocrit centrifuge. The centrifuge spins the blood at an extremely high speed. Only three to five minutes are required to pack the red blood cells. The results are read at the top of the packed cell column. I would like for you guys to always so make sure that you're participating in the case studies on each of these chapters. We're gonna go on to the white blood cell count. Please highlight that providers use the white blood cell count, WBC, to assist in the diagnosis and prognosis of disease. You need to highlight the reference range for a white blood cell count is 4,500 to 11,000. Also, continue to highlight where it says an increase in the white blood cell count or leukocytosis is the most commonly seen in acute affection, such as appendicitis, chickenpox, diphtheria, infectious mononucleosis, meningitis, and rheumatic fever. Normal elevation of the white blood cell count can occur with pregnancy, strenuous exercise, stress, and treatment with corticosteroids. Conditions that result in leukopenia or a decrease in the white blood cell count include viral infections, chemotherapy, and radiation therapy. If you will begin also to become procedure with procedure 18.1 on page 668, and I would like for you to read the patient teaching for the iron deficient anemia. And then we're gonna continue on over to page 671. On red blood cell count, I need you to highlight that the range for the red blood cell count in a healthy woman is four to 5.5. Very next paragraph, I need you to highlight that the conditions that cause a decrease in the red blood cell count include anemia, Hodgkin's disease, and leukemia. Conditions that cause an increase in red blood cells include polycythemia, dehydration, and pulmonary fibrosis. The red blood cell indices, the RBC indices are reported as part of a complete red blood cell count, CBC, test. RBC indices provide the provider with the information about the size and the hemoglobin content of a patient's red blood cells. The red the RBC indices include highlight MCV, MCH, and MCHC. For the MCV, mean corpuscular volume, please highlight where it says the MCV is a measure of the average size of a single red blood cell. For MCH, mean corpuscular hemoglobin, please highlight that the MCH measures the average weight of hemoglobin hemoglobin within a red blood cell. On page 672, right above MCHC, please highlight the sentence that says, for example, iron deficiency anemia is associated with both a decreased MCV and a decreased MCH. For the MCHC, mean cell hemoglobin concentration, you need to highlight where it says the MCHC measures the average concentration of hemoglobin within a single red blood cell count. Excuse me. For white blood cell differential count, you need to highlight that there are five types of white blood cells or leukocytes, each having a certain size, shape, and appearance and function. Please become familiar with figure 18.5. We're gonna go on over to page 673 for types of white blood cells. I do, again, I want you guys to try to read all the case studies in the chapter, and there's a case study two on page 673. For types of white blood cells, please highlight that leukocytes are classified in two major categories, granular and non-granular. Granular leukocytes contain distinct granules in the cytoplasm and include neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. The next paragraph, you need to highlight that the neutrophils are the most numerous of the white blood cells. A neutrophil has a purple, multi-lobed, multi nucleus that contain three to five lobes of seg or segments. Neutrophils also are known as segs. The cytoplasm of a neutrophil stains a faint pink and contains many fine granules that stain a violet pink. Please highlight that neutrophils exhibit a high degree of amboid movement and are actively phagocytic. 
immature forms of neutrophils known as bands can be identified by their curved non-segmented nuclei. Normally, 0 to 5% of the neutrophils present are in the immature band form. When the percentage of band increases, the conditions often is referred to as a shift to the left. Highlight that an increase in the number of neutrophils, including band forms, is generally seen during an acute infection. An isninophil contains a segmented nucleus generally of no more than two lobes. Highlight large granules are found in the cytoplasm. They contain a bright reddish orange. An increase in eosinophils are often seen in an allergic reaction and parasitic infestations. For basophils are at least numerous of the white blood cells. Please highlight that a basophil contains an S-shaped nucleus. Also highlight that a cytoplasm contains large, coarse, dark bluish black granules that almost completely obscure the details of the nucleus. Highlight nymph lymphocytes are the smallest white blood cells. You need to highlight that it is a deep purplish blue. Also highlight that an increase in lymphocytes generally occurs in certain viral diseases on page 674, including infectious mononucleosis, mumps, chickenpox, rubella, and viral hepatitis. Highlight that monocytes are the largest white blood cells. A monocyte has a large nucleus that is usually kidney-shaped or horseshoe-shaped, but it can be round or oval. Highlight that monocytes contain an abundant cytoplasm that stains grayish-blue. Reference range. You need to become familiar with the reference range for the neutrophil, neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, lymphocytes, and monocytes. I also want you to read case study 3. Procedure 18.2. I want you to highlight the principle on four procedural step. For the PT and the INR on page 677, you need to highlight that first paragraph where it says the PT INR test is a combination of a PT prothrombin and time test and a mathematical calculation performed on the PT test to arrive at a standardized value known as an INR, International Normalized Ratio. The PT test result measures how long it takes an individual's blood to form a clot. PT test results are measured in seconds. The reference range for a PT for an adult is 10 to 20 seconds. This means the blood of a healthy adult should clot within 10 to 20 seconds. In the third paragraph, I also need you to highlight that a healthy individual with a normal clotting ability should have a PT INR result that falls between 0.8 to 1.2. For the purpose, you need to highlight that warfarin is an anticoagulant, which inhibits the formation of blood clots in the body. On the other side, on page 677, above the collection of specimen, I need you to highlight where it says, when a patient is first placed on warfarin therapy, a PT INR test is performed once or twice a week to assess the patient's response to the warfarin. Based on the PT INR results, the dosage is adjusted so that the patient's results become stable and consistently fall within his or her ideal PT INR range. Highlight that once the test results become stabilized, a patient on long-term warfarin therapy should have a PT INR test performed every two to four weeks. We're going to go on over to page 678. I need you to highlight above performing a PT INR test. When collecting a specimen for a PT INR, it is very important to fill the tube to the exhaustion of the vacuum. Failure to do so results in an underfilled tube and, as described previously, leads to inaccurate test results. Please become familiar with figure 18.7. And then you can read over on what would you do case study two and three, and it kind of gives you um, examples on what you should be doing and not doing for the patient. You also need to become familiar with the terminology review.